Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Ryan Free Motorcars, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna show you something really cool, one of my favorite 911s ever, the car that actually got me to fall in love with Porsche for many reasons. It's excitement of how it looks, drives, but also some sentimental aspects of it as well. Feast your eyes on the 1994 Turbo 3.6 liter, one of the most iconic 911s in my opinion. You know, people could talk about 70s turbos, 80s turbos, but to me, obviously, I was born in 85, so, you know, when I was growing up and I was at the age old enough to fall in love with Porsche, uh, specifically my father actually got one, uh, 964 convertible, C2, red, black, and I precisely remember him only wanting to get a 91 because it had back seats so he could have the kids go in the cars. Uh, a 92 didn't come with back seats. So that was something as I remember, and I remember him teaching me about how the 92s and the later models had like the rounded mirrors. And even then, like that's kind of where like I learned, you know, about these little detail things, not only for convenience with kids, but you know, my father really taught me a lot of other things uh, in regards to these uh, air-cooled 911s as it was something he loved as well and we shared a bond doing. Um, but being this car, the 94 Turbo, the most iconic, highest level, in America at that time that most people would have. So again, not a lot produced, around 1,400 and change, but um, this one in Grand Prix white, which is very rare to come across. You know, we talk about paint to sample, you know, um, paint to sample would be very rare, and there are a few of them that are floating around and have, you know, been known and seen, but finding one in Grand Prix white, for me at least, has been a very impossible task. Recently, I was at um, an auction in Pebble Beach, uh, it was Gooding, I believe it was Gooding, and I bought this from them. It was underpriced, but you know, again, some people will say it's overpriced. Who knows? Because years ago, I remember when I first fell in love with this car, it was like 70 grand. You know, so you could see publicly what I paid, and it doesn't matter because realistically, it's like, when are you going to find another one? When are you going to see another one as good? With the fee, it was $456,000. The estimate was five to $600,000. Now, some people say, how do you buy a car at an auction? and uh, you know, then try to profit if somebody saw it, sees what you paid. I, it, it, someone told me a long time ago in this business, it does not, not matter what anyone paid. If someone paid 10 grand for a car that's worth 50 and you have to pay 40 for it, who cares if he paid 10 grand? It is irrelevant. If you want that rare car and there's not a lot of them around, you gotta remember it. You know, if it's the right spec, if it's the right you know, condition with no paintwork and all original, no modifications. These cars that we talk about in our showroom that we have, realistically, there are not many comps. So for example, to my knowledge that I've seen, the last car that was in Grand Prix white that I've seen sell publicly was five years ago, and it happened to be this car. So to say that, you know, I've been looking for one for years, and the right one, of course, and to then try to find one that's in within reason price point wise, I mean, maybe it took me a little longer and it got to a point where the car is actually appreciated out of my price range, but this car being as iconic as it is will not ever depreciate. There's just so few of them in good condition and original. Uh, as you see, let's walk around. These cars come standard with the Speedline wheels, which were a great, great, great touch. This one has the polished ones, which basically really give this like, I don't know, era correct look. Back then in the day, in the 90s when other cars such as Ferraris and Porsche and Lamborghini all made cars and models and Speedline were wheels that went on all these different brands. So it's interesting to think about like how like uh, in a boat, for example, you know, all the boats have Merc Cruiser motors. Could you imagine if all the cars back then had the same motors made by like one different company? Um, but yes, the designs were different, but this was like the style back then. Um, a lot of people put in different wheels, BBS wheels as time went on uh, because they wanted to have some sort of upgrade. But now the original stock look, it, it, like I use the word iconic because it just looks proper. Like you have the whale tail over here that has the black rubber, which then you know brings in from the earlier turbos, but brings in this era. And you were competing with Diablos, you were competing with 348s at the time, a few other different generations, uh, different models of each each brand, but um, at the time, this also, besides the look of it with the wide body hips and everything, it's around 355, 360 horsepower. It was very, very, very fast. Um, turbocharged, when you get on this thing and you drive it, it doesn't feel like anything today that is produced. 
Um, you, again, like I talk about the 964s, they're cars that like you always hit the gas. This, with having a little bit of a turbo, turbo lag, it's fun. But you, I feel like I could drive this car cross country and then feel as comfortable to drive back to New York from California um, because it is just such a comfortable car. Um, it has that, when you go inside, that look that you're in an old Porsche, that smell uh, that I remember. And it has back seats, which is pretty cool because I put my kids in. And as I remember, uh, when I was growing up, that was something that I did with my father. It was a convertible that he had, a 964 C2. Uh, and I remember hanging out the back and it was just such an experience. And just driving in the car was really, really cool. And uh, as I became more in love and learned more about these cars, I started then trying to find you know, the best of each kind, which as you know, a Turbo S Flakbau 964, which is a car that is very close to my heart. Took me years. Again, a car that I remember was, I think the lowest priced one I saw was like 125,000. Didn't really even know what it was, but I just remember. And then uh, I think Sloan had a black, black one uh, for like around 165. And that was, it's gotta be like 15 years ago almost, which is, it's probably even more than that. I can't even remember, but it was right when I was in college. So definitely before that, like 20 years ago. And those cars have appreciated tr uh, tremendously, as you know, million dollars, a million plus. We have two in inventory now, but the 3.6 was the one, you couldn't see it's Turbo S ever. You know, it was impossible to find. There were only 39 produced for the United States. So the 3.6 was something that you were able to more see. For example, when I would be in Florida, because um, this is where all these cars were back then, like nice places in Florida, you'd see them. And I remember in Boca Raton walking around Meisner Park and there's a circle there where all these like cars would line up. And I swear I wouldn't even go to, uh, to dinner and sit at the table with my parents, I'd be standing outside to see all the cars that showed up. And I remember once a white and black 3.6 turbo came, pulled up, and I was just like, this is crazy. And then later, as you realize, you know, the movie Bad Boys with Martin Lawrence and Will Smith made this car even more famous. So black, black was the color that like everybody wanted, everybody ordered. Uh, to basically be like that show. Uh, some people even painted the cars as crazy as that sounds. So that even adds to the point of like certain colors. Even silver is rare on this car. Um, you know, any, black I feel, I don't know the exact production numbers off the top of my head, but I would say black is definitely the most produced color out of all colors in the 3.6, but it also looks the best in it. But um, this white car, we took it to the city the other night and it was just attracting attention like, like bees and honey. Like, uh, it, just, it just hits different. So this car only having 35,000 miles. Again, this is a car I would love to keep. You know, I've recently sold some of my other personal cars, which we'll get to later. And uh, that kind of comes into with the fact where like the next car for me is always, I don't want to say better, but another experience. I've realized where when I sell certain special cars that I own, like my Mint America Roadster, or uh, some other ones I won't mention just yet, but you place them. You place them with certain people in certain collections that you know you're gonna get them back. You know they're gonna be taken care of. It, this is not the car business. This is like you're selling artwork, you're selling assets, you're selling uh, some, an experience. You're selling something that connects you with the, like the person. It's not a normal transaction where someone comes in and buys a car and like, oh, you know, there, oh, there's my car salesman. No, these are people that we stay in touch with and build relationships with and build connections. So like, this car, no matter what you pay, you know, whether it's 500, 550, 475, if I sell it for that, um, go find another one. You know, even though that this is from 94 and they made, you know, over a thousand of them, let's say, uh, 1400, closer to, you're not finding a clean white one like this with good miles. It has original paperwork to it. Let me see right now, because back then, just to give you an example, if I recall, the sticker was around 90,000, 99,000, 100,000, which the flat bow, the flat nose package is around $60,000. Uh, I believe I have it. Yes, yes, yes. It's like some of these previous owners, you know, they take pride in ownership. And right here they have, this is the window sticker. So yeah, 99,000 right on the money. Uh, I, I try to always act, not act confident with the knowledge of numbers and prices, but I, for, you know, I, I guess I was right there. I should have played lotto today. 94 turbo, 99,000. Let's see what the op. Oh, 18 inch polished wheels was 299. Oh my God. Wow. So with the gas guzzler and everything, this car was 102,000. Um, it originally came from, let's see where, Idaho. 
But the fact that this is the original window sticker framed, it just shows how people care about these cars. Underneath the hood, as you guys have seen before, these show option codes, which would you know decode basically any other things that would be coming on this car. Um, some like special options, but this one's pretty basic. Uh, Grand Prix white, great car. Let's just put this back nice and neatly so it's kept for the next owner. Hopefully, maybe it will be by myself. Also, certain things that are pretty cool that show pride of ownership are things like certificate of authenticity. You can order these from Porsche. Up, oh, it is not in here. That's not nice. Sure, it's actually, you know what happened? I believe one of my guys took it and put it with the rest of some of our files, but we'll get back to that. That is something you can order for a few hundred dollars online and it really adds nice value to the car and shows pride of ownership and caring and what type of owner you are. Not saying you're a bad guy if you don't get it, but ultimately, paperwork is important on these older cars, basically showing documentation and where it's kept, been kept and how it's been kept, which also then you know creates the value and adds value and makes it maintain the value. So enough of me talking about it because you're probably sick and tired of me talking. Let's get behind the wheel of this car, my favorite, favorite, favorite Porsche ever. So you're gonna see a lot of smiling, a lot of excitement, especially when we're hitting into second gear from first and that boost just kicks in and you start flying. Really, really exciting. So let's go, very excited. Let's go for a ride, come on. Just some cool things when you start up the car. It's also those old noises you hear and the smell and the feel. You can't smell through the camera, but like just hear the motor start up, all the lights go. People wonder what the exclamation point is, the airbag light, all these lights go away. Put the e-brake down, you start rolling, it will work. But ultimately, it's just the feel you get while driving this car. It's really like no other. Again, 94s came standard with the oval mirrors. You got some nice wide hips in the back and the quarter panels. And like I said, this is just a, uh, a very versatile, everyday type of car. You could feel very comfortable and casual driving it. Again, a car I feel like you just go around and floor, put some AC on, which is nice. These cars, the AC actually works well so compared to some others, such as the G bodies. I'm gonna go for a little spin. See, it's a little harder when you floor it in first because then it gets a little jumpy, but when you put it in second and you kind of got to wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, here we go, lift off. It's simple. It's not crazy loud. It's not like loud like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, but there's just something to it. There's just something to these older Porsches that you just can't compare any other car to. The German engineering, similar to the, some of the Mercedes Benz back then, um, those were the best cars in my opinion. An 80s Testarossa, or early 90s Testarossa, uh, and Diablo, they're much bigger cars. They're much bigger, uh, like, they're like boats. Like this even, 94, and I'm flooring it around the turn, and you just feel stable. The engineering in these cars, for its time, uh, was way, way, way ahead. Um, I think of other brands. I'm, you know, listen, I've read a lot of reasons of what have affected things back then um, for, and what their end goals were, whether it was sales or whether it was building a faster car for racing. Um, but ultimately, let's just, you know, my purpose is here is in, in, in to educate and in sales aspect for the U.S. models, what has come here, what is a car that somebody would want to have in their collection, or honestly, if you just want it in one air-cooled, and you have the coin to do it, this is definitely one. Um, I remember seeing these cars grow. I remember seeing people be told they're crazy for spending 150,000 on a 3.6 turbo. Um, it's, just, it's just amazing to me how cars like this are viewed so differently. They're, they're viewed now literally as artwork. I have a collector that just reached out to me that's not really into cars. And, um, but, but as an appreciation of the understanding of collectability um, and history, um, and basically told me that he's just tired of looking at artwork on his walls and, and is building this new home and is building a 25 car garage and figures, you know, listen, he's not gonna drive them all the time, which most of these people don't think about it, 90, 1994 with 35,000 miles, although it's, you know, not 10,000 miles or 5,000, it's still relatively low. Um, but for a person like that, you could sit in this form of artwork. You can go to dinner in. You could share a memory with a friend or a wife or a girlfriend uh, or a child. You know, it's a great 
a son or a daughter bonding experience thing and educational on history. It, it, it draws a lot of parallels to things in life just because of, you know, appreciating where, uh, you know, the models that we see today on the road brand new came from. You know, I have uh, somebody that works for me, younger in the company. I won't say her name because she'll get mad at me. She used to say, oh, I hate the old uh, Countach. I said, well, you like the new one. Well, how do you think they came to the design of the new one? They, they, they went off the old one. So you have to, and, and now she understands and she gets it and she appreciates the history that comes from uh, seeing how we got to where we are. And, and that, that's many things in life that, 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 that could be related to. But in, in regards to cars, you know, uh, the standard silhouette of a 911 has been pretty, pretty, pretty standard and has really not evolved tremendously in some forms in size, size inside or outside. The newer models are a little bit more bubbly, um, a little bit more bigger for, and spacious. But even in here, like, it still feels spacious. I mean, realistically, you're, you're putting four people in this car. And I've gone on many, many, many test drives in the back of a, a 964 or a 993. Um, and for dual purposes, A, I don't want someone stealing the car, two, uh, to really show the size of a person that could fit, not comfortably, but, you know, fit relatively comfortably uh, in a sports car. So, like, you know, if there was a kid, basically, in there that's 10 years old or something, you know, they could fit snug like a bug, so to speak. So, it's just cool. You're not going on road trips with them. You're going to get ice cream. These are memories being made. Um, and that's what's really cool about it. So you're able to like bridge this time um, with your children, with cars that came from a past time and, and, and they can learn and understand it. For example, my, my seven-year-old daughter comes in the car right around the block with me and begs me to hold my hand as I do the stick shift and wants to understand what that is. And, and I don't think she still yet understands what it is, but uh, the, 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 she's gonna know and she's gonna remember you know, like, oh, my daddy, when I was six, seven years old, you know, took my hand and taught me how to drive stick. And, you know, it's just, I remember the first time I learned how to drive stick. It was actually in Aruba on uh, like an Isuzu. And I remember my dad parked the car on a hill and made, put the e-brake up and put it in gear and turned it off and said, get in the driver's seat and said, okay, go. And you're either going to go backwards or you're going to go forwards. Um, but as you see right now, as we're talking, I'm driving this car so casually. There's speed bumps, uh, there's potholes I'm avoiding and stuff like that, but the suspension, the drive, the comfort, the air conditioning, everything's pretty good. It has a sunroof, um, while if it was optioned with a sunroof delete, that would have been a rarer option, although who doesn't like a sunroof? But this is a car that like, you know, you look at a red Ferrari, you look at a yellow Lamborghini. I'm not saying anything bad, love them, cool, but if you go to take your girlfriend or wife that really isn't into cars or flashy things, for some reason, there's just like this stereotype that like the Lambo or the Ferraris bring a different type of opinion or perspective. And an older Porsche or any Porsche is just cooler. Uh, I don't know if you feel the same way, but, but without a doubt, I've noticed that from, from you know, like for example, my, my mother-in-law who knows nothing about cars, when she comes over and sees like a, a yellow Ferrari in my driveway, she's just like, oh, what's that? You know, what is that, a million dollars? And that's the other thing. You could look at a, a million dollar Porsche and not understand that that car could be a million dollars or a half a million dollars. And then you look at like a yellow 348 and just, oh my God, it's so in your face. And it's, it's realistically, you know, a hundred thousand dollar car but it just, it's how it hits you differently. And when she saw this car, she was just like, wow, like that is, she even said a piece of artwork, like every angle, cause this car is curves, it's lines. Uh, and she has no knowledge on history and heritage and, and you know, uh, earlier models of 911s, where they came from and stuff like that. But that's why like this car to me is like, I compare it to for in modern a 997.2 like a 2010 turbo. It's the best hybrid of old meets new, where this in the air-cooled era is by far the best of old meets new. It has your creature comforts, it has some uh, you know, actual real power that can be used. And especially in 1994, mid-300 horsepower, turbocharge, I mean, this thing is fast. 
We're about to take a, a right onto our open raceway road, as we call it, where we do some of our test drives. We're gonna open this thing up so you could really see and hear, you know, again, not loud exhaust, but it's just that feeling and that rawness and uh, it just is unbelievable. Another common thing in this, as you may be noticing or not, the seat in these cars, sometimes there's a little piece that needs to be fixed underneath that makes it go forwards and backwards. It's something that happens on a lot of these cars, believe it or not, but it, yeah, it's just this little locking mechanism that needs to be adjusted. But um, this car is not fitted with the sports seats. I would love to put sports seats in there. I don't know how people didn't order them with the sports seats. They are just such a better seat. It holds you in better. I had them in the America Roadster that we drove and the uh, my flak bow, we have them, and it just really hugs you uh, the right amount and just looks really much more aggressive. Um, but the, what, what Porsche is here is just the simplicity that you see when you look around. This is not full leather, but it's fine. It's, you know, proper. The, the, uh, the perforated headliner is pretty cool as well and something that has always been in Porsche. Um, you know, from the 60s, you know, even way back as far as uh, all the different 356 models. So it's cool to just pick up, pick up a few different attributes um, from other generations and other models. But at the end of the day, think about it. They were like a company trying to make money. It was a company for profit. They weren't building artwork and so behind the artwork aspect. But uh, the engineering and design from the era, wow, what a time. I mean, uh, it's just really, really cool. And to talk about the flak bow, the guy that actually designed it actually kind of got some heat because people said how ugly it was. So it's just something cool that was, uh, here we go, let's forget about what we're talking about here. So I'll just get off the gas for a minute, but it's just when you're, when you're locked in on those turbos, you are just like on rails. So it's not like the car you, you downshift so to, but we're at a lower enough RPM, which is like 3,100, which I'll put it down, rev it up a little bit and just let it engage and go all the way up to 6,500. Oh God, this is my freaking favorite car ever. Ever, ever, ever. Like not even a question. So people that are in my company, they're like, oh, how do you not love the 4.0 better than this? Or, you know, like my flak bow, the Turbo S having a little bit more horsepower, even more faster. They're, they just like, nobody knows what it is. And, and that's kind of what's cool about it. That's kind of what Porsche people like, the discreetness, the uh, simplicity, and just like the, the not so loud. And yes, there's people that buy these cars and they modify them and put different headers and exhaust and wheels and stuff like that and trick them out. But they were built and engineered mechanically uh, and the design so well that you just do not need to do anything. To a point where that like so many 964s and G bodies back in the day, people put these aftermarket um, wide body fender looks on them to give them that appearance. Um, but as you know, you know, nothing is better than freshly made and original uh, from Porsche. So let's just make a U-turn right now. Just love every RPM on this car. Some people need more excitement. And I, what I noticed from Shmi when from some of his videos, he loves the newer stuff. Yes, I get he loves building cars and the waiting aspect and stuff like that. Um, he drove my four liter, which did not have an exhaust on it in California. And although, you know, very raw and everything, it's not as exhilarating, but again, that's Porsche, you know? And everyone's entitled to their opinion of basically what they like and what they want. Um, but I choose Porsche all day, every day, not even a goddamn question from a value stand. I feel like consistently the most stable brand has been Porsche, whether it's over sticker being new or just consistently going up and maintaining its value. And as time has gone on, people have learned more about the stats to be able to understand the rareness. Let's go. Oh, baby, 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 baby. Oh, oh, oh my God. Just in fourth gear. And by the way, we just got like to 75 miles an hour. We're not flying. If you were in a V12 six liter Lambo or some sorts, you would have been going over 100, and, 100 miles an hour. Just downshifting so smooth. I mean, this car is from 94 and it just responds. And if you hit it properly with the right RPM, 
you could transition from like second to third or third to fourth and not skip a beat and just not even feel that you shifted. It's like it almost makes you feel that, that you are a great driver. And to have that type of engineering done in the early 90s, thank you. Thank you. God bless. God bless, Mr. Porsche. Uh, just an unbelievable car. So that's why this car is north of a half a million dollars. They don't make them like this. There are not a lot around. Forget about whatever color it is. I don't care what it is. When you're behind the wheel, it doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. That performance that you get could be in the ugliest color possible and you will smile looking at it. So thanks for taking the time for taking a ride with me. Any questions, feel, please feel free to ask. If you got a 3.6 turbo that you'd like to sell, I wanna buy it. I'm gonna be buying these for the rest of my life. So just so happy to be a part of this and have you join on. Next time, tune in. Thanks so much, Ryan Free Motorcars. See you later.